Welcome to another edition of the CS Podcast uh, Bears Post Game Show presented by the NUC NFL Draft Bible. Visit NFLDraftBible.com. I'm your guys' host, Chris Shanafelt, and uh, this is also going to be a pregame show as well as we not only recap the Bears Broncos game from uh, this past Sunday, but we'll also be uh, previewing this uh, this Thursday's game, the, the Turkey uh, Turkey Day Special, uh, Turkey Night Special uh, Bears Packers game as well, and uh, uh, here to uh, recap and preview those games is, uh, of course, Aaron Lemming from BearReport.com. Uh, Aaron, how's everything going, man? Doing good. Doing good. How about you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, tough loss for the Bears this past Sunday against the Broncos. Of course, uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of chatter about this game heading into heading into it. Uh, not only is it uh, John Fox's and Adam Gase's former team, but uh, it's the first time that Jay Cutler is playing his former team in a regular season game uh, as well. Um, you know, the, the the final to this game, 17 to 15. It was really a a, a gritty game. Uh, of course, you had Peyton Manning uh, inactive for this game. It was Brock Osweiler's. Uh, first regular season action uh, with the Denver Broncos and uh, I thought that the Broncos offense looked uh, as good as it did all season long uh, again although they were only able to put up 17 points it was certainly enough to get the win 17-15 over the Chicago Bears. Um, overall thoughts on this game I mean I, I thought it was again a, a very hard fought game but uh, in the end where, where it looked like the Bears were going to uh, possibly be able to force it into overtime the Broncos defense the, the best defense in the league was able to make the crucial stop. Yeah, it was it was a tough game. I mean, you know, going in obviously without Matt Forte and you know, Alfonso Jeffrey was big for them. Uh, their offense really couldn't get going, especially against the number one defense in the league. You want the firepower, and quite frankly, I, I've been really disappointed with the play of Martellus Bennett most of the year. I mean, he's really just played what I've characterized as soft. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. You know, I, it's going to be interesting to see moving forward. I mean, it's a little bit of a tough loss, but at the same time, like I told a few people, you know, if if this is a, the, the only loss that they're going to have for the rest of the year, I mean, they're really going to need to run the table at this point. Going in that game, they're going to need to go 6-1. and one. So, I mean, if they're going to go 6-1 and one and they're going to lose a the game, then preferably, you know, you want that against the ASD opponent. You want to be able to go 6-0, and oh, uh, you know, within the rest of the conference and Reno and the division. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, it's a tough loss. Uh, the defense, Played pretty sloppy overall, I thought. I mean, I didn't really think it was a good game from either side of the ball, but they were able to hang in. I thought Brock Osweiler played very well, um, especially for being his first start. So, I mean, at the same time, you know, there's definitely some negatives, but at the same time, they also hung in, and it was, uh, you know, the 17 15 game overall, um, and they were able to get past mistakes. You know, obviously, the first interception I thought was on Cutler. I don't think it was a very well thrown ball a little bit forced. At the same time, can't really blame him. I mean, he really didn't have much to throw to on that second one. I mean, I there was just nothing you could do about that. That was something I tweeted about during the game. I mean, there's just, in certain situations like that, you know, you can't, sometimes you can't feel that pressure and just the way everything happens back, you know, bouncing off the back of a line or like that. It just, some, you know, things just happen. So, the fact that they were able to come down, once again, Jay Cutler led them on a uh, last minute fourth quarter drive. They weren't able to get the two-point conversion, but it's all something to build forward, especially moving into next year. They're really building a uh, winning culture. Now they've got to, you know, go on short weeks' notice. I do think uh, both Forte and Jeffrey will play. They were uh, simulated uh, yesterday as being limited because there was no practice, and they were limited again today. So I think that will help moving forward. I think, you know, obviously being a divisional opponent is also going to be an interesting mix. So, it, you know, at worst case, uh, you know, even if they do lose and they do have, you know, a little bit of a rough patch, I mean, this is definitely uh, worth building moving forward. They have some things to, some things to build on. So it was, it, was a, it was a rough game at the same time. You know, it could have been a lot worse, especially under Trestman. I think it would have been a lot worse. Absolutely. Again, the Bears uh, lost to the Broncos this past Sunday, 17-15. to And you know what, Aaron, you mentioned that uh, Jay Culler didn't have much to throw to. Again, Mar- uh, Matt Forte missing another game. Alshon Jeffrey was inactive for this game. And I'm not exactly sure you could really call Martellus Bennett a reliable target. I-, I mean, as of right now, these last few weeks, it seems as if Zach Miller is more of a reliable target than uh, Martellus Bennett. And I-, I guess I just want to start right there. I mean, Martellus Bennett, what exactly is going on with him? I mean, not only uh, can he not, it seems like he can't block, but I mean, every every time he gets a ball thrown his way, it looks as if uh, it's, it's hitting right off his hands. Um, it, it's been very disappointing, and, and I think if there's one player that I'm uh, most disappointed with this season on the Chicago Bears, uh, I think Martellus Bennett might come up first. Oh, I agree. Uh, he really has. He's been bad. I mean, there's really no way around it, and 
you look outside of the, the receiving aspect, I mean, he's been absolutely lazy in the run game, uh, laying, laying blocks in general. I mean, it's just been a very uh, just a half-hearted effort from him, and that's just something, you know, especially with all the talk at the beginning, you know, the beginning of the year and in the offseason about him wanting a new contract. I mean, he's, he's playing himself right now, in my opinion. I think he's playing himself out of Chicago this next year. I, you know, he has, a, he has a one year left on his deal, but I mean, is his, is his mouth and is his, you know, everything else that he has, is that going to be worth the, the production that he's putting up? Yeah, he may leave the team in reception. So that's not really saying much when a guy like Alshon Jeffries makes too much time. Uh, Kevin White's not playing. Andy Royal hasn't hardly played. So, yeah, I think he's definitely been an issue moving forward now. On the positive side of that, uh, Zach Miller's playing great. He's stayed healthy. Uh, he's proved to be a pretty good target. So something that you could watch for moving forward is, you know, is, is Zach Miller going to be able to really sustain his success that he's had lately? Obviously, it was a down down game for most everybody, but he still was able to produce. Uh, he's been pretty good as a blocker. He's been very reliable as a receiver. Uh, yeah, he is over 30, but at the same time, I mean, it's the guy that really hasn't played much uh, in his NFL career. So, I mean, he's still got a lot of tread left on the tires if one can keep healthy. Uh, so, it should be interesting moving forward. I think there's definitely uh, somewhat of a tryout basis going on with some of these players to see what they can do, you know, moving forward. And, you know, if, uh, if Langford and Kerry can produce, uh, it'll be interesting, especially with Matt Forte coming back. That'll be an interesting scenario. But I also think uh, another interesting scenario is going to be, you know, can Zach Miller keep playing at this level? And is it going to make uh, Martellus Bennett expendable you know, at the end of the year? Uh, you know, they could cut him and have very low cap ramifications behind that. So that's definitely something to move, you know, look at moving forward. But uh, out of everything that's gone on, injuries included, I mean, he's definitely been probably my biggest disappointment as well. Yeah, absolutely. And again, as you mentioned, I mean, this is a guy that was, uh, you know, crying for a new contract in the offseason with two years remaining on his deal. And uh, here he is, uh, again, a very disappointing year so far uh, for Martellus Bennett. And, uh, you know, looking back at this game, Aaron, uh, again, the Bears drop it 17-15 uh, to 15 at Soldier Field. Um, Jay Cutler was able to kind of uh, lead his team into uh, to, to uh, score that uh, last second touchdown with about 25, 26. Six seconds remaining in the game, um, and then they had to go for two. It, it was a, a no-brainer that they had to go for two in order to force overtime. Um, uh, of course, you look back earlier into the game when John Fox decided to go for it uh, near the goal line, um, where, where maybe you know, uh, of course, now looking back, it's easy to say that he may have, uh, he should have uh, kicked the field goal. But uh, anyways, you know, 25, 30 seconds remaining in the game, Jay Culler is able to uh, lead the team to uh, near the goal line, and uh, Jeremy Langford punches it in for a touchdown they're down by two they go for the two-point conversion and it sounds as if that uh it, it was originally a passing play jay cutler seen something in the denver's defense that he didn't like he uh, audible it to a running play and, and it seems as if that uh, there were some players that uh didn't get that call they uh you know it looks as if i mean you, you watch the play and you see marquise wilson martellus bennett they're running their routes and uh i even think uh Hironis grass who may have not uh gotten the 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 audible. Um, I guess what was your what, what were your thoughts on the the audible? Uh, obviously, again, it was a no brainer that they had to go for it in order to force the game into overtime. Um, you know, going up against a defense that certainly looked like they're going to be bringing the heat. Um, they, uh, you know, Jay Culler decides to audible it to a running play, and uh, Jeremy Langford has no shot at uh, getting in the end zone. I mean, overall thoughts on that two point conversion play. Uh, the two hole conversion was definitely interesting, and it's, it's very easy to go back to hindsight and really you know, try to dissect something they should have done. But I mean, it's worth noting that Cutler is audible into many players this year. And so, in a situation like that, you know, you're down at the goal line, you're in a you know, you're in a tough situation, and I mean, it, it, it was worth going back to the fact that Denver had a number one ranked defense, and realistically. Uh, nothing had really been working for them, especially in the red zone. I mean, they had failed to punch it in on multiple attempts, uh, you know, even going back to when they went for on fourth down. So it's really easy to put things under a microscope out of the game and play the blame game and throw it on one player. But, you know, ultimately, and you, you hear players say it a lot, you hear coaches say it a lot, you know, one play doesn't make a game. And although it was disappointing and that would have got them into overtime, there's no guarantee whatsoever that they would have even been able to win that game. So... It definitely looked like there was some confusion. Um, I definitely think that, you know, it could have been done a little bit better. But at the same time, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, it's pretty impressive that they were actually in that position to even be able to tie up the game, especially after that, uh, 
like they're calling an interception. I call it more of a strip sack fumble. Uh, so it is what it is. Uh, they got to move forward. And once again, I mean, this is a young team. This is a team that is lacking talent. And this is a team that's growing and learning. And even getting in those type of positions and being able to be able to learn from those is going to be huge for them moving forward, especially in the next year. So. Yeah, it was a it was a botched play. It did look like, um, but at the same time, like I said, you got to you got to be able to trust Cutler at this point, and he's made multiple audibles during the season so far that have worked out in their favor. So, you know, myself, I'm willing to trust him at this point. I just think the execution wasn't there, and you know, they didn't win the game. So it, it happens, but that's why they play 16 games. Once again, he's Aaron Lemming. He covers the Chicago Bears for BearReport.com. Uh, you guys can follow him on Twitter at Aaron Lemming NFL. And uh, Aaron, the 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 Bears were uh, they they weren't able to capture this game again. They fell seventeen to fifteen. Uh, looking to next, well, this week's game. Uh, you know, this Thursday night they play the Green Bay Packers, the rival Green Bay Packers, who uh, the Bears gave them a, a run for their money week one. Um, you know, what are you expecting for this Thursday night game? And uh, is there any way? Our beloved Chicago Bears pulls out uh, pull out the victory in Lambeau Field. Oh uh, well, going forward to the game, I mean, it's going to be a short week for both teams. Um, it's it's going to be interesting to see how Green Bay is able to you know come after that victory. That was a big victory for them. Uh, so moving forward, I think that'll be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how the Bears rebound from a uh, disappointing loss like that. Um, they're going to be on the road, which they've actually played uh, surprisingly much better. Um, so that's that's also something else to look forward to. I think the biggest thing right now is that Eddie Lacy kind of got back on track uh, this last week. And, you know, what are the Bears going to do to stop him? Because realistically, the, the effort that they put forth against the run game uh, against the Broncos was awful. It was, I mean, there's really no other way to put it. You know, giving up over 170 yards that 10 of a running back that has been it was a 26 ranked rushing team or rushing offense in the league going into that game is just it's it's not it's not acceptable so i think you know coming off of a short week it's going to be a little bit of, it's going to be a little interesting obviously uh bears have played pretty well in prime time over the last few years um but you know it's, it's going to be a tough matchup and it's also worth noting that you know most of the bears wins against the packers lately have come at lambeau field um, so it should be it should be an interesting hard fought game. Realistically, uh, the Bears have their backs up against the wall, and that can make you know certain teams dangerous. But with recent history, I, it's really hard to pick uh, pick against the Packers at this point. I know a lot of people don't like hearing that, but I mean the Packers are just a, a better team, and especially if they have things figured out this last week, it's going to be an interesting game. Uh, but it's also worth noting. I mean, really, the Packers were a much better team than the Bears were in Week One, and the Bears hung tight. And I think the Bears have made a lot of progression, and quite frankly, I don't think the Packers have made much progression. I mean, they may even uh, step down or not. So it really could be an interesting game, especially with the Bears this year. You know that they're going to stick in every game that they have cut the plan, and that they have Alshon Jeffrey and uh, Matt Forte, to, even if he's on a limited basis, which I would expect him to be, I think they're going to be in decent shape to be able to keep it uh Keep it at least close. So overall, I do think the Packers are going to end up winning the game, but I think it will be close. And I, I'm not giving, you know, I'm not counting the Bears out in this situation, especially like so with the backs up against the wall. They've really got to run the table here at six and zero, maybe five and one, depending on what happens. But unfortunately, the tiebreakers really aren't going to be in their uh, at their advantage at this point. Right, yeah, and uh, as you said, I mean, it's kind of hard to go against the Packers uh, as this rivalry hasn't necessarily been a rivalry as of late, but, uh, you know, they, they have been competitive uh, at least uh, week one, that week one game against the Packers, it, it was pretty competitive, and I guess that's all you can ask for, uh, I, I guess, uh, heading into this season, that's all you could ask for. Now this week, I mean, maybe you could expect the team to win, um, certainly wouldn't be, uh, there, there certainly wouldn't be much uh, better than a uh, Bears victory on Thanksgiving. Giving night as they hold this, uh, they're holding some type of ceremony for Brett Favre. I believe he's uh, entering the Packers Hall of Fame uh, or, or whatever the, the Green Bay Packers call it. So uh, that would definitely be a great night to pull up the upset. Um, and uh, it sounds as if you, you do you do uh, think that Forte will uh, be playing at least on a limited basis. Sounds as if Jeffrey's going to be back. Uh, any update on uh, Eddie Royal? Uh, to my knowledge, Eddie Royal still, he's not practicing and he doesn't really seem to be making much progress. It's been an interesting uh, scenario with him. I mean, he had the knee injury that he played out. I can't remember what week it was. He's been, he's missed so much time. Um, but I mean, he finished out the game, so I'm not really sure what's going on with him. It's just been one of those years for the Bears, especially.
to the receiving core. You know, they get rid of Brandon Marshall, which I think was obviously needed, uh, you know, in the locker room. But, I mean, they've really caught no luck, obviously. It started off with Wyatt and Jeffrey and everything else. So, it, I don't see him – I definitely don't see him playing on Thursday. It should be interesting because they're going to have somewhat of a uh, – a mini bye week coming up after this, after the Thursday game. Uh, but I don't really have no update. It, does, it also doesn't look like Antro Rolls going to play, which is going to be interesting because, quite frankly, uh, Chris Brzezinski was pretty bad. Uh, you know, I, I, I would expect them to think very seriously about going back to Harold jones Corte at this point in time. So we'll have to see. But on the Eddie Royal front, I don't really think there's any real update on him or any real progress. Uh, I haven't really heard much on exactly what the injury is. And I think that's a little, a little weird. It's, it's been a very uh, interesting situation, but it's been something, especially with Jeffrey being out as much. I mean, he really... He needs to be that guy. He's a reliable slot receiver. He's a reliable on third down. Um, and that's something that the Bears offense has really missed. So, I mean, we're really seeing them firing on, you know, one cylinder uh, right now. And that's, I guess that's some something to be, uh, I guess, optimistic about moving forward. But for this week, uh, they're going to, you know, if they get Jeffrey back and if they get Forte back, and even if they're in limited fashion, I definitely think it's going to help them. All right, final uh, final little topic I want to discuss about with you, Aaron, and then I'll let you go. As always, your time is always greatly appreciated. Um, so there may not be an update on Eddie Royal, but there is an update on Kevin White. Uh, today the team announced that they won't be placing him on IR, at least uh, they, they won't be placing him on IR just yet. Um, he, he will be uh, practicing with the team for it looks like the next three weeks. Um, do, do you think that there's any chance that he appears in, in at least one game this season? I think uh, at least I, I personally think think that it'll be uh, pretty important for him to get uh, some type of reps. I mean, he, he missed all of the preseason, all of training camp, uh, and of course, so far, the entire regular season. I think it'll be uh, pretty important for him to see uh, any type of uh, game time um, game time snaps uh, in his rookie season instead of, you know, being in his second year and, uh, you know, seeing everything for the first time. Um, do, uh, again, do you think he'll appear in, in at least one game this season, Kevin White, or, or is it still too early to tell? Uh, more I step back, I do. I, I think he will play. I've talked, uh, you know, with my one of my more reliable sources. He's maintained the same thing all year. Kevin White wants to play, and obviously, to a certain extent, that means something, and to a certain extent, that doesn't mean much. Um, you know, the Bears aren't going to rush him. That this is, you know, they view him as their crown jewel. Um, this could be an eventual replacement for Jeffrey, depending on what goes on, you know, with his contract status. So, this is a guy that's going to rush back, but they definitely want on the field. And I know from you know the standpoint. From Kevin White, he wants to be on the field. He wants to get out there. He wants to, even if it's for two or three games this season or even one, I mean, he, he wants to get the monkey off of his back in terms of, you know, the playing time going into uh, 2016. He doesn't want to have his first game in 2016. I think it's pretty beneficial for the Bears uh, to be able to do what they're doing right now and to get him in a game, even if it is a game or two, you know, down the line, to get him that experience to know what it is to be out there on game day for the preparation aspect and just to get a little bit of confidence. I personally think that they're going to be, uh, you know, pushing the table next year to be a team that is going to be right in the playoff mix. And I think anything that they can do right now to help themselves moving into next year in terms of development, um, anything like that is going to be great. So I know a lot of the B riders out there, or I, I actually say every single one of them right now, uh, don't seem to think White's going to play. And like I said, uh, my, my source has been pretty consistent all year in saying that he expects, uh, you know, White to come out and play. Uh, I'm going to stick with the fact that he's going to play find any setback. I mean, obviously, uh, Dan Pompey had a tweet not too long ago talking about the fact that uh, Kevin's leg muscles really hadn't been uh, reacting quite the way that he'd expected or maybe a little weaker. Uh, but the fact that they're actually getting him out and practicing, I mean, that alone in itself should show some sort of progress. I know he's been in the weight room a lot. He's been doing everything, everything possible that he can to get back out on the field. And I, I do think that's going to end up paying off for him. And like I said, even if it's for a few games this year, I do expect to see him on the field. Um, and even if it is a limited capacity, just to get him that experience going the next year, that could be a, a sizable advantage that uh, most people, you know, don't really, can't really put a value on. So I, barring setback, I do expect him uh, to be in a Bears uniform playing a game before the end of the season. 
All right, and uh, yes, progress is good. Progress is definitely good. Uh, so uh, definitely great to hear that. And uh, again, I mean, if he's 100%, whether they're in the playoff mix or not, towards the end of the season, uh, again, uh, like you, I think it'll uh, certainly benefit him to uh, get any type of snaps that he's able to get. Um, so uh, again, Kevin White is now back practicing with the team for at least the next three weeks. We'll uh, certainly see what's uh, next for him after that. Um, Aaron, as always, man, your, your time is greatly appreciated. Uh, Certainly hope you have a happy Thanksgiving, and uh, keep up the great work, my friend. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. We'll uh, talk to you again soon. Sounds great.